And Pastor Matt um, had shared with me that I was going to be speaking. I had this story on my heart, but I heard it again and again. And you know how sometimes you hear a, a word from the Lord, you hear a Bible story, and then he just confirms it over and over and over again. And I believe yes. that he has a word for us this morning. And the title of my message is Contrary Winds. Hmm. Contrary winds. And I'm coming from the book of Acts, chapter 27, starting in verse 4. The book of Acts, chapter 27, starting in verse 4. There's a lot of scripture there, and I guess sitting under Pastor Matt, I tending to read a lot of scripture now. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Um, but I am going to jump a little, so I'll tell you when I'm jumping verses, because there's a lot in the story. And we'll be here all day. Y'all already know I'm long-winded. So, uh, Acts 27, starting in verse 4, it says, And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. Skipping down to verse 14. It says, But not long after there arose against us in a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strike sail, and so were driven. And we, being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Verse 22. And now I exhort you, be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Skipping down to verse 44. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all, all, all escaped safe to land. This book is written, it's the history of the church, and it's written about ordinary men and women of God being used and empowered in an extraordinary way. Yes, yes, yes. I want to remind you that the stories in the Word of God are ordinary men and women, weak, with frailties, insecurities with problems just like you and I have but met and had an experience with a living God and were empowered by him and the book of Acts uh, sister Sharon she always says read the book of Acts and get ready read the book of Acts and get ready because in the book of Acts is how he wants to use the church today. Right, right. And sometimes I feel like that we lose sight of that. We want to experience the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit amongst our body. Because without the Holy Spirit, there is no life. Yes. Amen. We want the Holy Spirit to move in this place. Yes. And what I love about Luke, Luke wrote this book and he's a physician. So, and Pastor Matt, you wouldn't know this. As a physician or a nurse or a doctor, you are you look at detail. Mm. You see things that other people wouldn't normally see. Right. And Luke wrote this book in great detail. Mm. And this book shows the earmarks 
of the church. How the Holy Spirit moves and operates in the body of Christ. And it's a blueprint laid out for the church today on how we should operate. It also shows a church in a progression of growth. Mm. We're in a growth process. Right, right. And we're all not at the same stage. Mm. And that is okay. Yeah. Because we're going to keep walking forward. Yeah. And we're going to keep yeah. moving forward. And pick up the next person next to you. Because remember when it was your first day. And you said yes to Jesus. Yeah. You were completely equipped right. with what you at the moment of salvation and the moment that you said yes but you didn't know how to use what you actually had right. Right. and through a progression of growth we learn and we learn through trial and error yes, right. so we're going to fall and we're going to get back up and we're going to fall and we're going to get back up because a father when their child is walking or learning to walk they don't yell at them when they fall down Right. They encourage the little baby as they're learning to walk to get back up. Come on. And it's soft and it's gentle and it's sweet and it's in love. You're telling the child to get back up. And sometimes I feel like we look at God and we think that he's a harsh taskmaster during our time of growth. Like he's upset with us. Hmm. He's not upset with us. We just have to keep getting back up, repent for whatever the situation was, get back up and keep growing and keep learning and keep going. So we should put no condemnation on those that are growing and learning in grace. We should love them and protect them and defend them. Amen. That was for free. <laughs> no, but I love this. Pastor Larson said that um, the book of Acts is the baby book of the church that you watch in the in the disciples and the apostles. their great experiences with God. But then you also see them failing. Right. You also see them skin in their knees. You also see them making wrong choice and going wrong directions. And right. the, but you also see the power of God leading and directing their lives. So I made you a little PowerPoint here. I'm going to really let you in my life now. This is me. Okay, and it, I did a progression of growth throughout the years of my life. Because as you follow the scripture, if you would go to the next one, that's my mom and dad. And if you go to the next one, that's my grandpa, and that's me, and that's him holding me. Keep going. And that's all my, both of my other grandparents. Okay. Oh, there I am. So one year's old, okay? So there's a progression of growth going. All right, go ahead, Manuel. You can just keep going. We're going to go through it quickly. I'm learning to walk. I'm learning to stand. I guess I learned how to climb and eat. And then that, over here is the first time I'm about to get in trouble. My mom said I was climbing in the bathtub, and I wasn't supposed to be in there. So... Oh, there I am. So I'm still growing. Two and three years old. Keep going. And there I am in kindergarten. That's my brother and sister. And then I'm going to keep... Oh, look, no teeth. Lost some teeth. Okay. That's when my mom and my stepdad got married, and I thought it was the sweetest thing. I'm over there in the corner, and there's my brother. Okay. And then I'm getting older and older. But you know what I noticed when I started looking at these pictures, and it was sad actually, but I started seeing the, the, the darkness. Mm. I did. I started seeing a sadness in my eyes through the things that I went through. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the disciples, they felt like that at times. There was a sadness that set in on them from the experiences wow. that they had had. Right, right. You would keep going. There's me playing to pass the mat. Check that out. Okay, there's second base and catching, okay, in case y'all all didn't know during the softball game. I, so, different sports. Here I graduated high school, but if you, you wouldn't know it unless I told you, but my dad just passed away. He literally passed away a couple months before I graduated high school. So, in this picture, I'm actually super sad. Okay, you can go to the next one. But... 
This is when me and I first met. This one over here, we're laughing. And then that's where we are today. So I showed a progression of growth of when we met till now. Keep going. That's when I started ministry in New Jersey. Those are some of the kids I took care of in New Jersey and in the ministry in New Jersey. If you would keep going. Graduating Bible college. Keep going. I had to put Samson in there. Y'all know I had to put my dog in there. So when I got my dog then, so with the kids now today, the youth now today, Royal A, y'all see yourselves. Oh, Royal, yeah, there you are. Okay, good. So, you, so now we're here. Now we're here. I come all the way from the beginning, and now we're here. Keep going. Then I got the little kids in there. Keep going. And then them all praying at the altar. One more. And the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I want you to get the best is yet to come. Okay, I did that so you can have a little window of what my life looked like. And I feel like that's what the book of Acts was. Real men and women of God empowered by God, but there was little windows, like clips of their life that they shared with us. And this story is going to give us a, a window into Paul's life. The common thread in the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit sent them. If you didn't know, but you've been called, but you've also been called to be sent. That's good, yeah. I can't reach the people, Shane, you can reach, or Royal, you can reach, or Leah, you can reach, or Naya, you can, I can't reach them, Bree, I can't reach the kids in your school and your teacher that you can reach, Amen. but God called you to send you, and your life, our lives should preach at any time, not just behind a pulpit, you have an altar right in your heart Amen. that your life can preach the gospel wherever you go at any time. Robert stopped his truck on the side of a road to speak to a woman named Nicole that is now prospering and growing in the things of God. And it's been a, a while now. And God is moving in her life. Why? Because he didn't say, oh, I need a pulpit on Sunday morning to give a message. He seen a girl in need. He stopped his truck and he spoke to her and her whole life was changed. That's the gospel. To be doing. Amen. But we see this chapter, and just if, as I go down it, Paul sails to Rome and he sets off to launch, but he hits a storm. But no man's life is lost. But at midnight, there is a shipwreck. I want to encourage you this morning that every time you set sail to launch, that God, when God has spoken to you, right, right. there will be contrary winds. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. If you have been trying to move forward in the things of God, yeah. there will be contrary winds. Yes. There might even be a shipwreck. Mm. But you will get to your promised destination. Oh, yeah. You yeah. will receive what God has promised you because his promises are yes and they are amen and they do not change we might change we might falter we might be unbelieving but God's plan for your life does not change based on you bless the Lord bless the Lord now we might take a detour Every now and again. Right, right. But God also knows how to get us back on track. Yes, yes. He, know, he knows how to plant our feet. He knows how to send people to get us in the right direction. Yes, yes. He knows how to... He's got your phone number. He knows how to dial you up and speak right. to your heart. Yes, yes. He knows how to speak to you when nobody else can. Yes. God can reach yes. you. Yes. So do not feel like he can't. But I do want to say this as I read this story and went through it. And I seen this in my own life and I speak this to myself. Angela, do not be in a hurry for the next step. Mm -hmm. Do not worry about tomorrow what your life will bring. Don't worry about ministry, Angela. 
Because there's always going to be a next step. There's always going to be a next thing to worry about. In humanity, there's always something else. Hannah Emmanuel, you just got you just got married, and that was the next step. But there's always another step, and another step, and another step, and we can worry so much about the next step that we miss what God is trying to speak to us in this step, in this season of our lives. Pastor Larson said this in his notes. I, I actually texted him while I was studying for this message because it, I, his, he taught this class. And yeah. I said, Pastor Larson, I'm having a problem. In my notes, there is no notes. Because the Spirit of God began to move in the class. And when the Spirit of God takes over, you're not typing on your computer. There's no notes. And he said, well, Angela, amen to no notes. But he did have this portion in there. And it said, be in hurry for your relationship. Mm. Hey, that's good. Wow. Hurry for your relationship and let God build you into what he wants you to yeah. be yeah. so that he can use you yeah. in what he has for you. Wow. So hurry to your relationship with Jesus instead of always looking for the next step. Because he's preparing you in this step for the next Praise step. Yes. Yes. And Naya, she brought it back to my remembrance today. So when we used to do ministry in Jersey, we, and I never seen this, ever. I didn't. I'm telling you. And I'm like, why didn't I see that? We did ministry in Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> and she called a lady up that we used to be under in ministry and they're talking and Mrs. Swinger goes um Naya y'all were doing ministry in the city of Patterson New Jersey now y'all down in the bayou doing ministry in Patterson Louisiana yeah. Yeah. like that was just a way of God saying you're in the right spot <laughs> you're doing the right thing I thought that was really cool I've never seen I, Naya's like you've never seen that I'm like, oh, bless your heart. No, I've never, seen, I've never seen that. All right. So setting the tone in this, in this setting, in this story. So Paul set out to do what God had called him to do. And guess who was lying in wait? The Jews were lying in wait to murder Paul. When you say yes to Jesus, whether you said it yesterday or you've been saying it for 30 years, right, right. there is an enemy lying in wait. Come on, come on. Okay? To come after your faith, to shake you to the very core. Right. These right. Jews were out for blood. They meant business. Mm. And they were patiently waiting for Paul. Right. They were patiently waiting for him. And no matter, whenever you surrender to God, it could be at one step at a time as we're moving forward in the Lord. There's going to be something that comes against you. It could be even your own doubt and unbelief. Right. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be our own inadequacies or, or looking at ourselves when God calls you to do something. But they were lying in wait for Paul because now there's a bullseye on your back. Because you are empowered with the Holy Spirit that can flip this whole world upside down and change people's lives for eternity. Yes. Do you know what you have inside of you? So the enemy doesn't want you to move forward in the things of God. He wants to murder your relationship with Jesus. So you feel isolated like you are alone. But you are not alone for he has translated you from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom of light. And he can shine his light. Yes. Your situation might be dark still, but he can shine his light and dispel the darkness. The enemy will attack when you're not ready, when you have your guard down. And he will use by any means possible to attack your faith. But God is still on the move. Yes. He is still on the move. 
And what I love about this is the Jews went to Festus, the governor at the time, and they were complaining about Paul and talking about Paul and their grievous complaints all about Paul. Listen. People are going to say things about you as a Christian. They're going to say things about you that aren't true. They're going to make up things about you. I remember Pastor Larson say I'd rather them lie about me than be able to actually say something true that was wrong. Let, yep, let that sink in for a minute. Festus knew Paul was a Roman citizen and he treated him as such. See, God was already working it all out. See, the destination and the plan was to get to Paul, to, to um, Caesar. That was the destination. But there was a whole gamut of things that went on in between. And I always think about, I wonder if Paul could really see the whole story if he would actually have gone. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. God doesn't let us see the whole thing. He doesn't want us to see the whole thing. Because there's going to be some hardships that you're going to have to go through. But you're going through them for the glory of God that you could touch other people's lives. He's going to turn it around. He's going to use it for his glory. And the Holy Spirit, see, the enemy will do anything to stop it, to thwart it, to destroy the plan of God upon your life. But God will not let that happen as long as you keep moving forward. Amen. People won't always understand what God has told you to do. Religion, religious people won't always entreat what God has told you to do. Sometimes what God has told you to do messes up your whole thought process. It really does. Well, I thought things were supposed to be this way, and I thought it was supposed to be that way, and oh, bless God, I'm supposed to do it this way. What do you mean I'm supposed to do that? What do you mean I'm supposed to love them? What do you mean I'm supposed to go here? What do you mean I'm supposed to entreat them? See, God is going to rock our world because he doesn't want us to rely on us at all he wants us to rely on him every step of the way so paul was placed on the judgment seats judgment seat and the jews came and they laid out all their false accusations against him a pastor said one time, let the blessings of God and the anointing of God upon your life vindicate you. Mm. Let it speak for yourself. Mm. Let the yes. You don't have to vindicate yourself. Right, right. You don't have to fight for yourself. Right. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. Amen. You let the blessings of God and the anointing upon Absolutely. your life Amen. speak for itself. Amen. Hallelujah. As Christians and through my walk, I wish somebody might have told me this at one point, but I might just, it just, you know how you get told things and it just doesn't sink in right. at the moment? Well, this now, as God has given me a revelation of this, it has set me free. You will be misunderstood. You will be taken wrongfully. You will be ridiculed. And you will be called names. But when you're operating by the power of God, you will be. So settle that in your heart and do not be dismayed. Amen. Don't be dismayed. God will always use it to teach us something. And he will always use it to fight for us. He will fight for us. So as believers, we need to have a thick skin. Amen. Naya's mom, she would always tell me, she said, Angela... You're, and that's what she does. She slaps her hand. And she says, Angela, you're just going to have to get a thick skin. Because, uh, I mean, I, I'm a crier, so I'm just going to be real with you. When somebody hurts my feelings, I'm usually crying. So, but you know what? God has raised me up and has taught me that it's just what comes with the territory. And I'm not going to promise you I'm never going to cry again, because I will. But 
it comes with the territory to be misunderstood, but God will use those misunderstandings to teach you not to get offended, to teach you to love beyond measure, and without um, an unconditional love, he will teach you how to forgive. He will teach you how to speak with grace, even when you have been wrong, yes. even when you've been accused. He will teach you, because you know what? That shows Jesus. Yes. That shows Jesus. And I'm setting the stage with Paul because, see, he was setting out to launch. And he had to go through all of this. And I, I mean, to me, I'm like, man, did, do I really want to follow after the Lord? Like, look at what he's going through. But God prophesied that he would stand before kings. And in order to get them before these kings, this is the means that God was using. So don't try to put God in a box and things. think that this is a specific way. He's just going to pay it out. It's going to be all nice. And we're just going to go. No, there is going to be some because there's a reality to Christianity that we're going to face some things. And if it was just easy all the time, we wouldn't need him. Right, right. That's good. That's right. And so in this place, this was God's plan all along, too. I just want to put that out there. This was this. Wrongfully accused. In the judgment seat. Ridiculed. Misunderstood. Wanted to be murdered. Man, that sounds like the plan of God. Some people in the church would be like, what did he do wrong? That's yeah. He's living in sin. Yep. Some, something's wrong. He's not happy. He don't have faith. This was the plan of God the whole time. And Paul, he appeals to go see Caesar in Rome. So Festus, King Agrippa, comes in and Festus says, King Agrippa, can you, can you listen to this man? I want you to hear this man out. So God positioned Paul to be, for, to be before King Agrippa. Prophecy fulfilled. There. And he stands before King Agrippa and he tells him all about Jesus. And he tells him that he rose from the grave and he tells him the whole story and the anointing of God is in the room. And it's not just King Agrippa, it's 500 men. No, think about that. Men that would never come into a church building. God orchestrated it that Paul could be before these men. They would have never walked into a church. But God got the man of God to where he needed to be that the 500 Festus and King Agrippa could hear the gospel of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. He didn't have a pulpit. He was on trial. That's right. And God used him to testify of the kingdom of God. And when he was done, he, they said, this seems unreasonable. Why is this man being put to, why is he being put on trial? But see, Paul had already appealed. So they, are, they were already setting off to launch. Paul testifies of the power of God and in the power of God. And after presenting Jesus, I love this, he, he gives an altar call. And if y'all didn't catch this in the scripture before, check this out. And you don't have to really look it up. But in Acts 26, 27, he says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. He was like, all right, altar call in the middle of the judgment seat. I just gave you the gospel. He said, then King Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou hast persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost. He gave it. Listen, you can. I gave altar calls. Naya has given altar calls in her car. We have given altar calls in the south of Philly at the cutting board. This girl gave her heart to the Lord. You can preach the gospel anywhere at any time, and they can receive Jesus in any place. And it's the same Savior. <laughs> Doesn't have to be at a church altar. We are created to impact lives as believers and as, in, as Christians. Paul preached what came out of his relationship 
Once again, back in the beginning, I said hurry to be in a relationship with Jesus because what comes out of your relationship with God is what's going to flow out of you. Right. And if we're not in a relationship with Jesus, all the ugly that we're not allowing God to deal with is going to come out. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And it will be seen. And that's okay because remember, I told you baby book growth process. Okay. Yes. We're all in the process. But God is going to continue to move us in the direction that he wants us to go in. It was God's divine purpose that Paul get to, to Rome. So Paul was going to get to Rome. He was going to go. And he, he probably didn't see it with his natural eyes. He had to have eyes of the spirit. Right. And that's what we need to ask God for. Give us supernatural wisdom, supernatural discernment. God, give us eyes of the Spirit, your eyes, that we may see what you want us to do and that we may hear. He had orchestrated through a host of bad situations to get Paul in position. Yes. Think about that. He orchestrated yes, he and used... The bad to make it good. Yeah. And he will do that in our lives. Oh, yeah. A common thread that I see throughout the scripture is that he uses bad situations to glorify his name. Daniel in the lion's den. He shut the mouth of the lion. That's a bad situation. He shut the mouth of the lion and the king was amazed. He used it for good. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And there was a son of God in the fiery furnace with them. And when the king looked in, he seen him. He used a bad situation and turned it around for his glory. Yes. Esther, taken from her homeland. Could you imagine just being placed with a heathen king and telling him to marry him? And she said, well, if I perish, I perish. She was there for her people, but she, then God took a bad, see, I couldn't imagine being in that situation, a bad situation and turned it around for his glory. Ruth lost everything yeah. with Naomi and decided to go where you go, lodge where I lodge, and God used it when Boaz showed up on the scene to provide for both of them. Yeah. God can take a bad situation and turn it around for his glory. And that's exactly what he did in this story. Paul sails to Rome. God's plan was that they would always launch. And his plan, he knew there was going to be contrary winds. The scripture says, verse 4, And when we had launched from thence, we sailed unto Cyprus because the winds were contrary. You know what I noticed about this story? I thought it was, it was pretty cool. Is that Festus allowed two companions to go on the boat with, with Paul. Hmm. He was allowed to bring friends. Hmm. He went as a prisoner on the boat and could bring his people with him. Yeah. <laughs> God can soften the hearts of heathens. Yeah. He can yeah. soften the hearts of those that do not know him and work it in your favor. Yeah. See, when you are anointed yeah. by God and called yeah. by God, yeah. the hand of God is upon your life and it's going to work out in your favor. It's going to work out in your favor. It might not look at like it at the time, but it will. And you know what that shows me? Surround yourself with men and women of God. Amen. Listen, if Naya was a prisoner and she was getting on a boat and she said, Angela, come with me. <laughs> I'd probably be like, let me pray about that first. <laughs> no, but really though, these men were so dedicated to the cause and to Paul oh, no. and to Christ right. that they were willing to risk their own lives when Paul was the only one on trial. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's powerful. Right, right. God, let us be sold out like that. Yes. God, let us be sold out for your glory and for yes. your kingdom that I'd be willing to get on a boat and go to the other side, not knowing what that means. It wasn't like a cruise like Troy and Atoya are on. <laughs> they were prisoners. Right, right. 
And they were going and they, and they meant business. They wanted to see what God was going to do. There are going to be few that are willing. Surround yourself with those that you know can get in the trenches with you and can fight the battle with you. Amen. Those that rejoice on the mountaintop with you and those that are willing to get in the mud with you as well. Those when you're down and you're depressed, because guess what? It's going to happen. You're going to be oppressed. Things are going to happen. We're going to kick, scream, cry. Okay, because that's what happens. Those that are willing to stand with you during that time and those that are willing to rejoice with you when you're doing good. You need those around you. Surround yourself with those people that are willing to go through it all with you. Yes. That are for you. That are for you. Because there's going to be a moment in your life that's going to be sorrowful. It's going to be difficult. That death is going to be knocking at your door. That's what happened on this ship. But these men were willing to go with Paul and travel together. They launched out. It means that they were to be brought out. They sailed away. They were led up at a point in time. Church, I'm telling you, the time has come where it's time to come up. Where it's time to launch out. Where it's time to sail away. Sometimes we, there's a, different um, mind, mindsets that we might have of the things of God or what he's called us to do are things that we might be struggling with. Well, God is ready to move you forward in the things of God. And sometimes we need to leave the shore in order to do that. There comes a time when he calls you out of your current state and condition and he wants to call you to a new place. And we should be willing and wanting to go where he wants to bring us. This doesn't have to be a sinful state. Mm. It could just be a growth state. Right, right. It could just be something that he's calling us to do. <clears throat> it could be something that God wants to move you out of. Mm. A place. It could have been anything, but let, I'm just going to lay this out there. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. So whatever you feel like God is calling to do, you to do, is it healthy for your relationship with Jesus? Is it going to lead people to Christ? And then it doesn't just have to be in ministry. It could be in life. Right, right. He could be calling you into a new place of blessing. That sounds nice. <laughs> yes, Lord, do it, Lord. And either way, whatever he is calling you, out of or away from or to launch out he is calling you out but there will be contrary winds Absolutely. there will be contrary winds in front of and the opposite direction they will hit you from every single side but when you move forward there is no going back back is not an option back is not an option we are going to continue to march forward. Amen. And the winds were the opposite of the, cap the captain's direction. So the captain gave you orders, but the winds are going to try to blow you backwards. Mm -hmm. But the only way isn't around the storm. Right. It's through it. Wow. Man, we don't want to go through. <laughs> we don't. I'm like, away, <laughs> around, find me another. GPS. <laughs> like, can we figure this thing out? No. God said, I'm going to bring you through the storm and that no man's life shall be lost. So I'm going to tell you, I'm all going to see you in glory. Every single face that's sitting here right now at the sound of my voice. We're all going to glory together and we're all going through. Because not one man's life on this ship is going to be left behind. Glory to God. Your children's lives are not going to be left behind. Your husband and wife's lives are not going to be left behind. You are standing in the gap for them. And if you sit here under the power of God, not one man's life is going to be left behind. It might look, this was a, death was knocking, okay? They were in desperate need. Yes, yes. But God showed up and told Paul that not one man's life was going to be left behind. 
And through these contrary winds, you're going to be walking with God. We're on the winning side. No matter what, you're still on the winning side. No matter what you face, we are on the willing, winning side. And he's going to test our faith through failures, through fears, and it's going to take a great deal. But God is ready to launch you out. Don't feel defeated even in failure. Because God is still moving. God is still moving. He's still God. And he's still moving. And he orders the footsteps of the righteous. As we keep our faith in him, he will continue to order your footsteps. Well, I don't want to go through the storm. Well, that's where he was ordering Paul's footsteps. Right, right. And Paul and the prisoners, I thought this was interesting. Paul and the prisoners, even they switch ships. But guess what? Even with switching ships, mm -hmm. they still went the same way. They still went into the storm. They still went the same direction. <clears throat> they had to switch ships, but they still <coughs> were headed in the same direction. And it said that the winds continued to be unfavorable. Mm. And they weren't making good time. Have you ever said to the Lord, God, why are we not there yet? Right. You know your kids when you're going on um, vacation and they're like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I feel like that we're like that with the Lord. Like, are we there yet, Lord? Are we there yet? Oh, can we do it? Are we there yet? Are you going to bring it? What are we going to do, Lord? Are you there? Are we there yet? And that's what was happening here. The adversity of the situations was causing them to slow down. But let me tell you this, even if situations and circumstances and adversity has come at you and you have slowed down your pace, as long as you're moving forward, we're going in the right direction. Yeah. Sometimes we get hit and knocked down, but we just get, keep, we get back up and we keep moving forward. And that's what they were doing. They were journeying by faith against the contrary winds. See, it wasn't just a moment. This was a long drawn out journey. And it was a continuous press. Sometimes I'm pressed for like five minutes and I'm like, man, Lord, can I get out of this? Like, oh my Lord. Like, and you feel like you're dying. Listen, I'm just going to be real. I don't know if anybody else ever felt like that, but like a big old elephant is sitting on your chest and you just, and we're pressing. And it's not like I'm not doing anything wrong. Like Paul, he wasn't, he wasn't wrong. He was just being pressed. Right. God was just growing his faith. He was right. raising right. him up. Was he going to press? Are you going to press? Are you going to continue to believe God? See, that's the press. Yes. Right. So you can't right. muster it up in your own right. strength and right. press in your own. No, you better get laid out before God and let him give you the strength to keep believing Amen. and Hallelujah. keep pressing. Because God holds you in the palm of his hand. But then I like this because they came up to a place named Fair Haven. Oh, bless the Lord for the breakthrough. Yes. Bless the Lord for the breakthrough when they come up to Fair Haven. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Glory, Fair Haven. They got to Fair Haven. See, you ever been in a press and all of a sudden you come or you get in worship in your car or you're in right. prayer or you come to church and there's a Fair Haven moment? Yeah. It's like, oh, the glory of God falls and you're excited. I mean, you've been in the press. Yeah. You've been going through some things. You've been launched out. You've been doing what God has called you to do. You've been doing exactly what he's called you to do, but you've been pressed and you need some replenishment. You need a refreshing. You need a touch. Yeah. You need yeah. God to move yeah. all over you and you get that fair haven moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you're refreshed and replenished in that moment. But guess what happens? Then they got to go back out. Yeah. <laughs> they got to go back out. And Paul says, wait, wait, wait. God told me don't go. There's going to be damage. There's going to be hurt. Don't go. God told me to tell you not to go. And they don't listen. 
If God tells you not to do something, don't do it. And delay doesn't mean denial. So if God is just putting you still for a minute, that means you better chase your relationship with him and get equipped for what he wants you to be and what he wants you to do. Stay in fair haven. <laughs> no, really, that's where they were. And he told, they told, they, God told Paul to tell them not to go. They were in a good spot. They were in a good position. They were in Fairhaven. They were receiving from the Lord. And then they're like, no, we got to go. We got to get to where we need to be. Mm. I know I've been in a rush before. I don't know about y'all. Right. I'm like, All right, Lord, we're going to make this happen. What are we going to do? Let's do it. You know? <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. God will blow up your world, and then you'll be sitting there like Jonah in the belly of the whale, like, wait a second, <laughs> I must have missed the beat, I must have missed it, but what I love about the Lord is he was still in it. Right, right. He was still in it. He didn't leave them. He didn't forsake them. So the captain said, nope, we're getting back on and we're going back out. And this time was a time that they were going to travel that was going to be the most dangerous of all. Mm. If God is calling you somewhere, you need what you need to do what you need to do in order to pass through. Because this time that they were going to pass through was going to be the most dangerous of all. Wow. I, I listen, Lord, equip me with what I need yes, to pass Lord. through yes, that Lord. most dangerous yes. time of all. Yes, yes, because the enemy is going to try to blow your socks off That's right. when you step out to do what God That's has right. called you to do. And God will do all he can to get your attention. His, his word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. So if you can't hear the voice of God, get in his word. Yes. Get in his word. His word will speak to you. His spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will confirm his word to or three witnesses. He will speak time and time again, and it will be confirmed to you. Because God, help me to be ready for what you have called me to do. Because he was going to stand before King Caesar. And that was not going to be an easy task mm. so this was his test God will allow you to move forward even when you can't see the whole picture or the ending Acts 27 14 says but not long after there arose a temptuous wind called Eurocladon temptuous means a slowly consuming I was like ooh like it was slowly coming in, and it was going to consume them. Wow. Right, right. God, if we would have just listened to begin with. <laughs> That's right. But they didn't, and it was slowly coming in, and it says, but not long after they set sail. God was warning them to be still, but they set sail against his wishes. God was not surprised that they set sail. And that's what I love about the Lord. Sometimes we could be real ignorant. <laughs> and, I, and I say that in all love. Right, right. We can be ignorant. Or there, we can be self-willed. We can be stupid. <laughs> we can, for lack of a better term, like sheep. We can be like dumb sheep. We can have um, pride and arrogancy. There's yeah. things in our hearts, a stubbornness, a lack of discernment. Mm. We can do all, we can have all these things and just like those who were commanding the ship, they just wanted to go. They just wanted to get there. Wow. They were in a hurry to get where they needed to be. And, but God's hand, what I love about this is God's hand was still upon the ship. Mm. Even in that, even in our frailties, even in our weaknesses, God's hand is still upon your life. Amen. It's Amen. still upon your ship. It's still upon you. And God said there will be no life that's going to be lost. Eurocladon was a great hurricane, and it came to knock them down. But God was with them. And when the ship was caught in verse 15, they could not bear it up, so they let her drive. There's going to be times in our lives that we're just going to have to let go of control. Right. That should be all the time. 
That should be all the time. But you know, sometimes we're walking along with the Lord and we're walking along with the Lord and then something comes along that you're just going to have to let go of the helm and you're going to have to surrender to the Lord and let him drive your life and let him drive your ship. And that's what they had to do. The winds actually were getting them to where they needed to be at this point. And they let go and they surrendered the ship. And then they went about... And verse 17 says, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strike sail, or so were driven. They were passing back and forth these large ropes or cables underneath the ship to keep it intact. You ever feel like you're losing control? That's right. <laughs> Like things are just completely out right. of control right. and you're just trying to grab on to anything to feel like we're back in control mm -hmm. again. But these, this, the only thing that was, is going to keep our ship afloat is the truth and the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So be grounded in the word of God. Pay attention to our faith. Pay attention to the truth of God's word because that's what's going to undergird your ship. There is not going to be one thing at this point in this storm that they were going to be able to hold on to that, that was going to keep them afloat. Only your faith is going to be the truth of God's word is going to be able to keep you afloat. Pay attention to the truth that's attached to your belief system. Mm, wow. Are we believing the right way? Right, right. Because that's what's going to keep you afloat. That's right, that's right. Undergird your ship with the lines of truth. That's where we need to be rooted and grounded because the fierceness of the storm that we're going to face is there to take us out. Yes. <clears throat> so it's the truth that we need to tie down, to hold on, that there be a double security system in Christ yes. to hold us together. And then it got worse and worse, so they decided we're going to lay in our ship. They started throwing things out. Right. God's going to bring you to a point in your walk with him where you're going to have to start throwing some things out wow. because they're yes. weighing you down. Yes. Yes. You're yes. overloaded. Mm. Throw it out, fear. Throw it out. <laughs> Throw some things off your ship. Yes. Down with unbelief. Throw some mindsets off your ship. Well, God didn't call me here. God didn't tell me to do this. God, listen, I can say that all day long. God called me to pa Did God really called me to Patterson, Louisiana. I have to undergird my ship. When I'm driving here an hour and 45 minutes and an hour and 45 minutes home, that can be a long drive. I'm just letting y'all know when you're tired. Okay? But I need to know that I know that I know that, that God has called me here. I need to undergird my ship and know that this is where I'm supposed to be. When I'm facing something, I need to know the truth of God's word. That you comfort me when no one else can comfort me. That you bring me peace that passes all understanding to guard my heart and mind. Get in the word of God and let it dwell richly in your heart. That the Holy Spirit brings it back to remembrance that you know he is a great deliverer that you know that he is your healer you're not healed yet but your healing is on the way see undergird your ship because when the enemy or a situation is allowed that touches our health our bodies I know that when I'm even sick with the flu the enemy likes to come in my heart and my mind and just wreak havoc because my walls are down but you got to know that you know that who, who you serve and what your belief system is built off of. Amen. Undergird yourself. Amen. And hold on. Hallelujah. Because what happened was they started throwing all these things out that they didn't need anymore. As I have grown in the Lord, there are some things that I used to believe. And I'm like, I can't even believe I believed that. <laughs> like, I really thought I was supposed to act like that and do that. And sound like, it was just, I'm like, man, Lord, 
Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release the old and embrace the new. Amen. God's bringing you into a new season. Yeah. Yeah. And God wants you to get rid of some old things so you can make room for the new. Yes, and Acts 27, 22, it says, and now I exhort you, be of good cheer. Rejoice in your storm. Rejoice in what God is doing. Because guess what happened? He said that and the ship broke apart. <laughs> be of good cheer. Boom. <laughs> God was preparing the hearts of the people to be ready and he said be of good cheer I promised you I'm bringing you to the promised destination I'm bringing you where I told you I was going to bring you get ready be of good cheer you can rejoice in your storm and no man's life will be lost God is coming through God is coming through for you and in the midst of the storm, I pray that we be like Paul when the angel showed up and told him, tell the people, be of good cheer. I want to be someone that hears the voice of God, that hears the voice of God in the midst of the storm and say, be of good cheer, be of good cheer, be of good cheer. Even though we feel like our world is being rocked, be of good cheer because you're going to get to your promised destination. And the rest, Hallelujah. it says in verse 44, and the rest of the people, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship, it came to pass, they escaped all to safe land. Broken pieces of the ship. Mm. God wants a broken people. Come on. A people that hold on to the cross, that hold on to his blood. That's all they had was the wood from the ship. That's what they floated across the storm on, was the wood from the ship. All we can hold on to is our faith in Christ at times. Because yes. yes. every they lost everything. Yeah. Everything. Mm -hmm. They lost it all. And they held on to the wood of the ship, and they all escaped. They all made it to dry land. So... People of God, be of good yes, cheer. Amen. Now, if you would come, and if we would all stand, be of good cheer. It might look dark. It might look gloomy. It might not look like you thought it was going to look like. But undergird yourself with truth. And be of good cheer. Even in the contrary winds of your storm, be of good cheer. Amen. And I want to give an altar call. First, if you feel like you need to unload your ship and allow God to remove some things from our lives that need to be removed so we can let go, go of the old and embrace the new. Yes. I ask you to please come because he wants to lighten your ship. If you feel like you need to re be replenished in the presence of God and you've been going through some temptuous winds and some contrary winds and you need to hit him to come and say, be of good cheer. 